Good evening, London. What's cooking? Good evening and welcome. We are 98.3. This is Revive FM. I'm Danny Green. I'm also known as um, Daddy Longlegs. I'm born and bred right here in the Shepherd's Bush. I'm a music lover. I'm a vinyl lover. I'm a digger. I dig shops. That's it. <laughs> is that right? I mean, the first time I found really Studio One, I had this album on tape when I was a kid. Well, I say kid, when I was an early teenager, I had this album on, um, on tape. It's called On Top by the Hetones. Now I've got it on a Studio One, but it's with uh, Take Me Darling and all that, but Pretty Looks, yeah? There's a horn on that that I just thought was amazing. I've got it now on 7-inch, but the Pretty Looks isn't all. I hunted down that horn. That horn's on the John Alt tunes. That horn's on the, that John Alt. Prince Buster album. I was chasing the horn, the horn was, that's that sound. And I eventually found this Vin Gordon. And I still can't believe I've, I've, I've been blessed enough to do a show with him. Cause that's, uh, that's like the epitome of, do you know what I mean? He's a living, living legend, living, living musical legend. And he's right up there with Coltrane, Hendrix. He's, a gov he's one of the governors of sound, man. He's got it, do you know what I mean? He's got it, definitely. Got a, I can't uh, hide it, to be honest with you. I'm very excited. We've got a very, very special guest in the house this evening. Cool, blimey. Vin mm. Gordon, yeah. welcome to RJR, mate. Yes, bro. Well, You're nice to be here, you know. This is a gentleman who's played on literally thousands of tunes. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most in-demand horns, man. I don't know. <laughs> even, even <laughs> lower. <laughs> um, you know, in demand horns, man, through the late 60s, throughout the 70s, and to date. Okay, shall we just kick off with this little Studio 170? Let's do it. The Real Rock, 1968, Vingord. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's His name's Vincent Gordon, Vin Gordon, also known as Don D Jr. Don Drummond Jr. Named after the greatest, arguably the greatest ever trombonist out of Jamaica called Don Drummond. Yeah. He encapsulates the sound of Studio One for a lot of the classic Studio One recorded between about 67 and 72. He's on the majority of the classic Studio One horn sound. And when Studio One's got its own distinctive sound within reggae, it's like a genre within, a, within the genre of reggae and he's fundamental to the sound. Vin caught the tail end of Scar, so that in-between period, 66, and then come Rocksteady, 66, 67, 68, he was up and running. That's why his tunes are so sought after. <laughs> I'd like to start with the first ever tune that you played on in 1965 when you were 15, 16. Mm -hmm. So I've got to say, to start your career on a Wailers tune, and you know you can hear your distinctive style from, from yeah. that tune. It's not like, you know some people when uh, early on in their career they're still finding their feet in their own sound. Yeah. Your unique, <laughs> yeah. your unique horn sound, it was there from the very first track yeah, ever, you ever laid, mate. Yeah. Wailers, 65, J Louse. So known as Good Good Rudy, Vin Gordon's first tune. My God, gets his own solo at the end of his first tune, Wailers tune. Come man, just play the tune, Luke. Gosh. Remember this with session. J Louse keeps there used to be enough shops in Bush, man. There was enough record shops even when I was growing up. Local folklore. 
everybody has to come to Bush to get their tunes, you know what I mean? But it's not like that anymore. Peckins is the only one in Bush. Peckins is the only one left. Peckins started in 1960. My mate's dad started selling tunes over here. He grew up with Croxton, the guy that does Studio One. He was a Studio One owner, producer. And they were mates. So Peckins was the original Studio One outlet in this country for Studio One. They've had the shop since about 73 or 74. He was selling tunes from the yard from 1960. And his son's my mate. So hopefully he's there. I don't know if he's there. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Everyone. You know, he, he's like, he's significantly older than me. But even for me, as a, a kid in the 80s, I come up with like, everybody has to come to Bush to find their tunes, didn't it? Well, everybody has one, to... You know? Like he's the first to bring Jamaican music to the country. Yeah. But Chris is from a, like, say, from Daddy Peckins. Any sound man, if you say Peckins, anybody in the reggae thing, you know what I'm talking about. And Chris, he's one of the sons he's got. I'm gonna bug a dude, he's still running the shop here. Yeah, he'll be here in a minute, dude, do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's nice, this is the last vinyl shop in Bush, really. There's Webster's in the market, he sells a couple of tunes, but when it comes to record shops, it's the only one in Bush, still left. Let's take that one down, Vin. Listen, before we go any further, let me pull out this wedge of mm. Cox and Sevens that I've humbly been collecting for the last 20 years, right? And I know some of them are you. I knew some of them were you, and now I know all of them are you. The Heptones, Mama Let Me Go. <laughs> That's you. Delroy, Run Run. Mm. Yeah, run, let me run, just, run. yeah, let me just put that on. Yeah. In the, let me just put this one on in the background while we talk. <laughs> Why not? It could be one of many. Those days we had to punch clock, man. <laughs> Is it yeah. cock cocks in that there? Yeah, we used to punch the clock in, you know, punch in and punch out. That's why the music, you have so much music. <laughs> you, you laid the fact that along with a couple of horsemen, you yeah, were the fact, yeah. you know, that's that Studio One sound, 67 yeah. to 70, yeah. you know? I've got Winston Francis albums we're going to touch that you played on, the Mr. Fix It, all the John Holt album, A Love I Can Feel, Stranger In Love. Let's talk about these, Love Me Forever. <laughs> Let's just play some of these, man. I'll tell you, I love I Can Feel. And that's enough. You don't even have to go through the pile. Right there, man. Let's play it. How, how comes you get them records? Where you get them? I'm, I'm a digger, man. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not the only one, mate. People hunt your stuff down, like it's, <laughs> like it's, I don't know what, mate. I hey, don't know what. Get, but... You're in England or still? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Vin Gordon, here we go, man. That's a big one. I don't tell people about this place anymore. I don't tell nobody. I used to. I used to tell the other guys on the station and that, but now I don't, mate. Because you've got to have some ex exclusives, you know what I mean? How long have you been coming here? Years now, man. Um, my eldest brother, he was at the first ever record fair in London. But he's, he drags me down there. He goes for more of the rock stuff, you know, the Bowie and the Dillard and all that. And I'll just go for my man there. There's a couple of nice reggae dudes as well. But you always get shots down there, man. You always get stuff. There's a particular sound that I love, do you know what I mean? I call it the roots of rare groove. It's what people call rare groove, do you know what I mean? But I go slightly back from like 66, 66, 68, 67, 69, those kind of years. And just get the killer tunes. And he's got them, man. Tunes that were never released here. Never, if they were released, barely, some of them barely released in the States. And there's only one press of them, so he's got them. But out of the 100 tunes, I might find two. But it's worth just, uh, just going through them, just to find those beats. Hey! I mean, I actually, I am. Um, like this tune, yeah? This tune, right? Please, summarize, please, yeah? I've got the instrumental, I've just been after this. I've got it on LP, but to have it on 7, mint as well. I could go home happy now, you know what I mean? I that side. Please, summarize, please, mate. <laughs> Jack used to get the records from America and he said, Jackie, just write the cards and... Just, Jackie Mitchell, yeah. 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 Okay. That's the way it used to go in Studio One. Okay. All of the American songs. 
So Jackie will sit down and work, work it out. Yeah. And when he started on the piano. He's a good musician. He's got um, perfect yeah. pitch. Oh, okay. He just hear the tune and just pop, 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 right and give a body. Simple as that. And just give the bass band the line. And so how would, how, would, how would you build a rhythm in back in those days, these original? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's so what I'm start saying. on the keys. You yeah, Jackie's the keys. a pianist and the singer sing to Jackie. Anybody have original song, they come to Jackie. Right beside everybody in the studio, everybody at the instrument. And they come to Jackie and sing, and Jackie write the cards and sing for me, and Jackie write the cards. And then, second time now, he, he give the bass man, give the bass man the, the line, and say, This is the bass line. And one, two, three, and the, take the music. The singer stay right beside Jackie and sing. And then, when everybody gone home, the singer dub on his voice. That's the way it used to go, you know? People used to work, it's like, like a factory. Yeah. It was like that then. <laughs> for what he likes. But do you know what I mean? You've got to, you've got to learn to play out. Sunny tunes at work. You've got to strictly shots. So, do you know what I mean? You go in, you dig in your selection. It's just shots. It's not collecting for collecting sake. It's killers. Yeah, what do I like. What I, mean? I don't just buy a record because it's rare. Yeah, or no, that don't I buy a record because I like it. Yeah, because you know I mean? it's a killer. It's a killer. Do you know what I mean? That's the digging. That's when it comes <laughs> to digging. You see this tune? Come and film this tune. You see this seven inch, right? We both collect curtains, yeah. We both Curtis fans. See this tune? Row closer together on the seven inch on the ABC. Now I've got this on the original album that it come on. I've got it on uh, the Big 16, a compilation album that come out a year later. The only time I've ever seen this tune is in his hands. I'm a, I'm a Curtis nut. Yeah. I can't let anything. Mix. Everything. That's why we hunt down these 45s. Here, play the tune. <laughs> this is a digger. This is the. If you want to crystallize, crystallize right, digging, this is digging. And if it weren't for this tune, <laughs> if you work for this tune, this is my top three tunes of all the time. Okay. I'm on the call, there's a quiet girl. I do love it though, you still got to look for it, Dad. I still got to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just like playing it because he ain't got it. <laughs> Cheers, bro. We're closer together for you and love. Like you, you about that. It's like when you go out digging and you spend all your lunch money, I don't give a monkey's. <laughs> if I don't eat all day but I've got that tune in my hand by the time I get home, do you know what I mean? I just put it on. Yes, you forget all about food, do you know what I mean? You forget all about anything. Then your original tune, Rock for Rock. I've been on the show, it was an absolute, absolute dream come true. I met him the year before he played live in Carnival, Winston Francis was singing on the float and he started blowing. There was another trombonist and I, he just looked across and put his trombone down and I see this guy come across and I thought, it can't be Vin, because I've been, I've been hunting down Vin for the last 20 years and it was him, Mr. Real Rock himself. He just started doing the Real Rock and I was just, I was just uh, you know, it was at Carnival, so I had a few. But I grabbed him after, started talking to him, I was, do you know what I mean? Whatever. Didn't didn't say nothing about me, DJ, nothing. I was just you know what I mean? It's just nice to meet the man. <laughs> and then I see him a week later, I drove past him, he was on Goldball Road. And I stopped, I said, Yeah, Vin, and he said, Yeah, that loony from the carnival, do you know what I mean? And from that 
he just said, yeah, he's staying at his mate's house in Latimer. So I just ran straight home, grabbed about 30 of his tunes, just ran straight round it just to show I'm not a mug, mate. Do you know what I mean? I'm a true fan. Do you know what I mean? I'm a genuine. He's got, he's an amazing musician, man. And from that, we just started chatting. And then about a year later, he ended up coming on the show. He doesn't even live in the country. So yeah, he just uh, come on the show. It was a big honour, man. I'm going to play one more studio. When I was a teenager, I had this album on tape. And there was one tune on the album that I just thought, what is that? What is that? What is that one? And the old album's, the old album's killer. I think it's on top. It's with Tate Regarding and all that. But this tune, halfway through the tape, I oh, killed the tape, man. Let's just play the tune, innit? Next shot your face and play the tune. Pretty looks. Vin, you fancy a go? Come, man. Deal with it, mate. It's all yours, mate. <laughs> Murderous man.